Yeah, so today I'm going to talk about Falcoin and AI. Uh, Falcoin is uh, a network that stores vast amount of data. So all these data can be applied for machine learning. It's just how we harvest it. Uh, I'm going to talk more about the democratization of AI, where uh, a lot of uh, smaller users can now use AI. Yeah. A little louder. So as you can see here, there are a lot of um, different regulatories. In the Europe AI Act, they mentioned that advanced models or any deep learning model have to go through a series of evaluations. Uh, and any incidents that's caused by the inferences have to be reported uh, to the union. So a lot of uh, different governments are starting to do all of these uh, policies. Uh, even in Southeast Asia, it's very fragmented. Uh, even in Asia, it's very fragmented. Every single country has their own version of policies. And Filecoin itself can act as a provenance layer um, because we are once you store data onto Filecoin, it's uh, immutable. At least you can prove that the data has not been changed in any way. Uh, this, is the this is a map of all of our storage providers across the world. We have a lot of storage providers all around the world. So we can cover for most of the policies for data locality. If you want your data to be stored somewhere and uh, you need machine, because usually machine learning requires your data to recite uh, where, where it occurs. So in these cases, uh, Falcon storage providers can be the data storage provider for the data layer uh, in terms of machine learning on a large scale. Um, I'm going to lead on to how the data architecture across the whole entire landscape is changing. So traditionally, we have banks, we do like uh, uh, OLTP transactions. It started off with the data warehouse layer. It went on to the data lake layer. Uh, right now, we're in the midst of uh, two and three. We are going to transit between these. So a lot of enterprises have built a data warehouse for OLTP transactions. Uh, this is for structured data. Uh, they did not account into sentiments that uh, came from social media. So social media plays a big part in um, data right now, data collection right now. You have your semi-structured data as well, your JSON format that um, led to the creation of the data lake. So traditionally, this is how it occurs. You have your POS, and then you have data pipelines. It ingests into a big data warehouse, and then they are fragmented into smaller data marts. So these smaller data marts, then um, the end users can create dashboards out of it. So they are very simple dashboards. This was uh, before uh, the advent of um, AI, or at least right now, there's a lot of AI applications happening. And this was also before like LLMs were um, popularized. Right now, uh, most enterprises use data lakes. So data lakes, uh, they aggregate together uh, structured data and unstructured data. So a mass amount of data is put into the data plane in the data lake itself. And then uh, now you can see there are now data scientists applying machine learning on top of it. So it's slightly different now. And also the machine learning training portion, the feature store is also something really new. The feature store allows you to share features across different organizations that uh, the data scientist has created. So one of the use cases on Falcoin is to ensure that the features used for training are stored in the Falcoin network and therefore they are immutable. You can prove that um, you did not change any of the features in a machine learning um, process so that when any audits or any policies happen, uh, any policies uh, check happen, uh, you can be sure to say that um, my machine learning process uh, is compliant. Uh, right now it has been decentralized, so they realize that aggregating everything into a data lake is too cumbersome. It takes too long for it to happen. So a project in Southeast Asia any banks that are doing this data lake project, it costs around 30 million USD. Uh, and after 30 million USD and two years of hard work, they realized that sometimes uh, the domain team, uh, I mean, the general uh, consumers don't have the domain knowledge to consume from the data lake itself. So they are now shifting it to the business units or every single domain experts within their organization itself. And every single, um, Entity is now creating this thing called a data product. So it looks really similar to what the Web3 industry is happening now. There's a data contract here. So this data contract can be, you can use FEM for it. In FEM context, you can create like a perpetual data deal with one of the data organizations. 
uh, in our storage uh, network. So if you know that someone is storing uh, biomedical data in a certain location, you can create an FEM and uh, create this perpetual deal where you keep taking in new data onto the network. Uh, or whenever your machine learning model is uh, not performing as well, you need fresh new data to retrain it, you can uh, do, do this model. So this is the data mesh. So this is one business unit by itself. Within it, there's, uh, I'll just skip this part actually. So imagine all the storage providers have an FEM within uh, this ecosystem. Uh, this is to power a customer 360 use case. So this use case uh, does cross sell. Um, for example, you buy a car and they get some profile from you, some marketing profile uh, of you. They can then sell this data or not really sell this data. They can aggregate more of your uh, consumer patterns and then they train a recommendation model across uh, on top of it. So the Filecoin network can then um, sell data to one another to create a very complex use case or a more complete use case. Uh, next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Ecosystem Wins. So Bitdeer, one of our ecosystem partners, uh, they can't be here today, uh, but they, had, they created a GPU cloud and all of the data here is stored on, uh, or at least most of the data here is gonna be stored on Filecoin. They are creating a pipeline to ensure that most of these data flow into uh, Falcoin so that they can create an audit trail for immutability. Uh, they have a global reach. They have um, data centers in Singapore and US, and I think they are going to expand to even more countries. But what's different here is that they are NVIDIA preferred partner. So they partnered up with NVIDIA and during the uh, GTC event that happened a month ago, uh, they actually um, shared uh, Falcoin on one of their side events. So this picture here is them sharing about Falcoin. Uh, I'll be showing, showcasing this picture as well to let you guys further understand uh, what our partner is doing behind the scenes on the GPU cloud. Uh, I'm gonna skip the Bitcoin mining part. So this is their interface. Uh, their interface is, uh, they have a model training, uh, at least a model playground. If you train your models, you can upload it onto BitDRS Cloud and uh, you can share the models. They have a model marketplace. It's similar to Hugging Face, but I think right now they're not charging to consume the models off here. And with the help of um, FVM, Filecoin, and IPFS, they can create smart contracts and AI, so they can create these perpetual deals with different um, entities that want to use their machine learning platform, or at least the models they are taking the data from different uh, places they can use smart contract to enforce it. For the decentralized data and the LM part, they are actually a Falcoin storage provider themselves as well. So they put the data onto their network and they are willing to collaborate with uh, uh, different storage providers as well. So uh, reach out to me if, if you um, want any uh, use case on top of this. Uh, AI governance as well, as I mentioned earlier, if you create, if you store your the steps of your machine learning uh, life cycle onto Falcon, you create an audit trail or you create this metadata trail to enforce uh, this uh, auditability. Yeah. So this is the machine learning life cycle. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about this. Uh, for feature engineering and when you're developing models, you can create a data providence layer so the audit trail is tracked there. For the um, inference side, you can put this as archival as well so that all the prediction results is stored somewhere. Uh, with this, I'm going to end my presentation, but if anyone here has AI projects, please come to me uh, and uh, talk to me about it. I will advertise it uh, in our ecosystem or even um, advise how to integrate with Falcon. Yeah, thank you.